Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, excited that uh, we added uh, four guys to the signing class today. Uh, I'll visit about those guys briefly. Um, we really did well with some uh, walk-ons as uh, to add to this class. I can't talk about uh, those guys right now simply because they've got to be admitted into school and stuff, and there's some that are still in that process. But uh, uh, I know that Taylor Bratt and his staff did a great job with uh, landing some walk-ons as well that we're really excited about. That will be a big part of uh, our, our recruiting class here uh, for 2022. But uh, the, the four that we signed today are Adrian Lara, uh, who's a quarterback um, uh, from uh, Goodyear, Arizona, Desert Edge High School, uh, tremendous arm strength, uh, really talented quarterback, can throw from all platforms. We were looking for a guy that could really sling it from sideline to sideline and, and throw vertical balls and uh, have great touch and great arm strength and uh, uh, excited about him. His dad's one of the coaches there, and so he's uh, a coach's kid that uh, um, he just knows about the game. So we're excited about him, and he'll come here in the summer. Uh, Jacob Parrish from Olathe, Kansas, Olathe North. Uh, Jacob's a uh, defensive back is what we're recruiting him, recruiting him as. He's a phenomenal athlete, could be a receiver, great kick and punt returner. Um, we've been contacting and communicating with him uh, since he came here in camp in the summer, uh, but kind of kept it uh, under the radar a little bit um, because we thought we had a real gem there and a hidden gem with, with Jacob. And uh, uh, he's extremely fast, extremely physical, very athletic, and excited to have another Olathe North product here. Uh, Tyson Struber uh, is an athlete, uh, could play him at wide receiver, can play him at defensive back, um, probably start him out at wide receiver, but uh, can do a lot of different things. We're going to see what he can do when he gets here. Um, and uh, he's out of Galva, Kansas, another Kansas kid that came to camp, did a really good job at camp, and just love his athleticism. And so we'll, we'll kind of play it out and see um, where he ends up playing for us. But uh, um, he's got uh, tremendous ability and will be another really good special teams guy, too. So, um, And then the last guy, a junior college kid, Vi Sayamalo, and we call him Uso. So when you get around him, just call him Uso. Uh, but uh, Uso uh, is a defensive tackle, um, came from Garden City, and he's by, uh, by way of Hawaii and uh, uh, extremely talented uh, guy that uh, uh, will help us inside. Uh, with uh, losing a couple of players in there. We've got a couple of guys coming off of injury on the defensive line as well that uh, uh, Uso will be a, a guy that uh, we're excited about, will be a mainstay for us. He'll arrive here in the summer as well. So those four guys uh, were the latest additions, and they'll, uh, uh, they'll start here in June. So we'll let's answer, answer some questions. Were you able to find, because of the transfer portal, that there was probably more P5 caliber high school players available at this late stage? Yeah, there's a bunch of them that probably still aren't finding homes right now. As we as a staff went out um, after the bowl game and spent two plus weeks on the road and got to see the amount of really talented 2022 kids that are still trying to find a home. Uh, and uh, we were lucky to be able to get a few. Uh, we only had a, a few right now that we could give because we don't know what's going to happen with our roster. And roster management is something that we're all going to have to look at as head coaches. And hopefully they get some adjustments made. But uh, um, there's a lot of talented 2022s. There's a number of kids that we ended up getting to walk on that a lot of times would have been scholarship players, if not uh, at group of five FCS for sure. And with Jacob Parrish, he was initially a blue shirt and kind of took that off. Was that more kind of playing keep away there with, because of late interest? A little bit of both. Um, and the fact that I just, I've been recruiting him a lot myself, uh, and saw him at camp, saw how competitive he was, um, went and saw him in school, gotten bigger, gained some weight, gotten stronger, talked to his head coach. I'm like, we're just not letting this kid go. We're, we're going to sign him today. And, uh, he and his family visited last weekend and, uh, so fortunate that we were able to, to sign him today. How tight is the scholarship count, and what relief do you hope can come along? Um, it's tight, but we still have some room for some needs. You know, we're probably going to need a, a defensive back. We're probably going to need a linebacker, a um, couple other positions. Probably going to need a running back. Uh, so we have room on those. Um, plus, you just never know. As I'm learning, fits on a day-to-day -day basis, what happens with your current roster? We have 
uh, a handful of scholarships. We have a handful of what we would call initials where we can sign some guys. Uh, but, um, you know, we need to play out this spring now. And it, uh, you know, where our bowl game was was great uh, on January 4th for a lot of reasons. But then you can't visit any guys. And there was a bunch of guys who were entering the portal around there. And we just, last year, we did such a great job of vetting the guys that came in here at semester. And so we just said, hey, let's hit the pause button. We know the guys we brought in because we were able to either bring them in here uh, during middle of December or had bunch of conversations with them throughout the month of December. We just weren't going to jump on anything in January when we know there's going to be another crop of them coming in this spring. Blue shirts, you kind of turned to that a little bit. What's the upside and the downside to those? Well, two things on it. We're going to turn away from that. We were able to this year, and we hope to continue to turn away from that because we got the initial or the extra seven this year. Um, and you shouldn't have to do it when you have – um, that many um, with getting 32. Initially, we did it simply because we were building our roster uh, in our first couple of years here. Um, and, uh, you know, the benefit is you might be able to slide a kid in that you missed, maybe missed on late. The, the negative in is you, you lost a spot for the next year. So we're um, hopeful in not having to do that at all this year. Finally, you're three years in now. Um, any adjustments that you foresee maybe in this kind of little pause between this and spring football like you have a pause, that how you do business in recruiting? I think we're always evaluating, to be honest with you. you can't, we can't go anywhere in February. Nobody can come in here. Um, and so that's a chance for us to get together and, and rack our brains of things that we want to do. You know, I look at our first year, and we had some success. We missed on some things. Then you throw that second year in, and we didn't visit anybody. Uh, and now we look at the third year, and this was more of a normal cycle. Um, but with the transfer portal, with NIL, we have to continue to look and evolve. Um, and what that will be, uh, I don't have that answer right now. I know that's something that we're talk we talked about at length this morning. We'll talk about at length throughout this month of February as we build our 2023 board. Chris, what would you say the plan is at running back right now to bring a few more guys in? Well, we brought a couple of, of walk-ons at, uh, at semester here to give those guys an opportunity um, that uh, or older guys that uh, we'll learn about those guys. But uh, we know this. It's, uh, it's not easy to go find a transfer running back with what we have returning. You know, we're, we're not going to promise somebody 20 carries when we got number 22 back there that uh, um, we all want to see get the football. But we have to be um, you know, cognizant that we don't, we don't have a bunch there. We lost some guys um, to the portal. And that's going to happen every year uh, at different spots. It just hit us at running back this year. So um, we're evaluating. We looked at some, some freshmen or some seniors in 2022. Uh, and now we'll continue to do that. We'll maybe look at a junior college kid because that's probably the area that I think has, has been missed on is a lot of junior college kids probably in May will come available. Um, because they didn't get looked at as much because of the transfer portal. But it's something that we're looking at every day. And do you know how many super seniors you're going to have next year, or are those conversations still ongoing? Um, they're start it's starting to come to light a little bit. I, I know uh, I'm going to miss somebody, but Eli Huggins and Ty Zentner uh, are two that um, I know are coming back, and I know I'm missing somebody. Uh, but those two uh, just kind of jumped out at me. And with the transfers you brought in, what all they've been able to do so far? Is it just working out, interacting with players? Tell us what you've seen from them this week. Well, morning. I haven't seen much of them because we've been gone. And we were on the road during the time that they came to campus. Um, I saw them this morning for the first time at, at a run that uh, Coach True had. Um, and, uh, you know, the guys, Josh Hayes, Will Honus, Brandon Jennings, Adrian Martinez, Sean Robinson, uh, I'll throw Kobe Savage because he was a, a junior college guy. I saw him at, at the run this morning, um, spent a little bit of time with him in the process. I uh, have to have them up in my office more and more so I can get to know those guys. Um, but uh, uh, they're guys that we did kind of vet through the process, and we know that they're the right kind of guy. They're guys that are going to um, enhance our locker room. Um, they're going to be great leaders. They're going to be guys that are going to be 4K state, not for themselves. And uh, 
um, there's a reason why they're all here, whether it's a position of need, um, which is all of them, as well as some of them are older guys that uh, will bring us some of that experience. But I've really just gotten around them. Specifically, can you tell us how that recruitment unfolded and what you liked about him? Um, yeah, we, Coach Klanderman, Coach Malone, Coach um, Wyatt, I know had been back and forth and visiting uh, with him uh, quite a bit, and then uh, um, uh, had a chance to zoom a lot with he and his dad. Um, I know that Van and Buddy knew a lot of people down in, in Texas uh, that knew him real well and followed him there and. Said he was, you know, the right kind of guy that would would help our program. I know he started out at quarterback. Shoot, he played a game here uh, against K State at QB. Um, then they moved him to defense, um, and so he's got that uh, savviness of understanding the defensive side from being a quarterback. And um, it's a, it's an older guy, but it's a bigger guy. And we're going to start him out at safety. He's played some safety, played some linebacker. We're going to start him out at safety. Coach, when you look at Adrian Lara and what he can bring to the table as far as playmaking ability, how does that fit in with what you and Coach Klein want to do now as he is the new offensive coordinator? Well, we'll find out because he's a young kid. But um, you know, just watching him throw the football, um, it's uh, it's you, you guys will like it because he's he's got, he's got a cannon for an arm. Uh, he's a good athlete. He's a two hundred plus pound guy already. He's two hundred five, two hundred eight, somewhere in there. Um, he played in an offense that uh, allowed him to throw it, throw it around a lot, allowed him to have some freedom of changing some protections, changing some route concepts. He gets the game, like I said, because of his dad. Um, just his arm talent alone, uh, I think, is going to really help us at that position. And so he'll be a guy that gets an opportunity to compete with the other young guys in the program. But uh, you know, each year, no matter what we did with bringing Adrian or not, Adrian in or not, each year we want to bring in a young quarterback. It's just something that we want to do. Max Marsh, as you guys know, we moved to defense, and so we had an open spot there, and we wanted to make sure that we continued to bring in a freshman. And then you brought in two new linebacker transfers as well. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about Will Honus and Brandon Jennings. Yeah, uh, Brandon played it at uh, Maryland uh, and had really productive uh, season. He's a young player. Um, got to know him through the recruiting process. He committed, I think, when we were down in – uh, in Houston um, at the Texas Bowl. And uh, Coach Standard did a wonderful job recruiting him. Uh, Coach Bratt did. We kept in contact, continued to try to uh, learn more and more about him. He's a high-energy guy. He's already a 230-pound guy, which uh, uh, at linebacker for us in this in this three down is something that we need a little bit bigger, like, like Daniel Green, a um, little bit bigger linebacker. We want to play him inside. But uh, a guy that I think will have a, a, a really – immediate impact for us and, and give us a, a more bodies in there because that's where we're down some numbers there. And then Will, uh, Bishop Carroll guy, and uh, uh, Noah Johnson and he are really good friends. And Will had an opportunity to play, gosh, I think it's like his seventh year of football, and um, um, wanted a chance to play. And uh, I know that uh, he's played some at Nebraska. The Nebraska coaches, who you guys know I'm friends with a number of them, um, speak really highly of him, and uh, um, I think Cade being down here, I think Adrian being down here helped. Uh, the fact that uh, he knows Noah really well, uh, I'm, I'm excited for him. He's coming off of an injury, and so we'll learn more about him in the spring, but I got a chance to be around him just a little bit uh, the other day, and, and uh, what a, what a first-class great kid that you can tell Coach Shuckman did a great job with at Bishop Carroll. Uh Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about what, what, what you liked about Tyson Struber and uh, his, how, how, how dynamic he can be for you guys? Yeah, uh, he dominated his, his level of football uh, and could do it on both sides of the ball, and that's what I, I, I think is so unique about him. He's got really good ball skills. He came to camp, showed that. He can cover as a defensive back. Uh, he's not afraid to strike it. He's got good length to him. He's going to continue to get uh, bigger and bigger. He's 6'2", 185 already. He'll be a 205, 210 pound guy. Uh, his versatility is probably what um, impresses us the most about him. In, in the fact of we could play him at wide receiver, we could play him at defensive back. Shoot, he could grow into a, to a linebacker potentially. Uh, but just uh, the fact that uh, he's an athlete that uh, is really versatile uh, is going to give us an op awful lot of opportunities to put him at different spots. Coach, you mentioned Jacob Parrish came into camp. 
a number of these guys are in your camp. How yeah. important are those camps to how you're recruiting a structure? They're, they're really important, uh, and we had – huge numbers at, at a few of these camps where we had really good competition uh, and you get to see Jacob Paris going against Sterling Lockett in, in one-on-ones and uh, uh, you know those things it helps us so much because you know you, you can see athleticism but most importantly you can see guys compete and it's different than just watching a game film or seeing a guy run at track or seeing a guy work out on his on his high school field with some buddies getting them in a, in a, in a competitive drill uh, where we can control it at our camp and put the best players against the best players. And, and watching him compete against guys like Sterling was fun. And uh, um, this, he's a special, special athlete that uh, uh, we were fortunate that we were able to uh, keep long enough and then get, uh, get signed today. Four Kansans out of the high school ranks continues to be your base and will continue. Has to be. Uh, but you've had some bleed off some really good talent into other programs. What can you do to kind of shore up the the borders a little bit better? Get them to come to camp for starters. That's the number one thing uh, is continue. And, and, you know, last year people were just starting to come back on campuses. And so that's the thing that, uh, you know, whether all, all the bordering states, um, we sent coaches out and we were out for two weeks, whether it's the month of March, getting them here for a junior day, a spring, uh, a spring practice, and then getting them back here um, for a camp and getting them around us as coaches. And, and we missed all that last spring. We were able to get it a little bit in the summer. I'm excited to get back into, into the recruiting cycle where we have kids visit campus. Because when you don't have kids visit Manhattan, it's hard sell. You guys know it. I mean, it's not like it's right off, right off the interstate with a huge metropolitan area around it. And so having that months of March and April and May and June where these kids will be able to come and visit campus is so critical for us. Because once we get them here, we got a great chance of getting them. Speaking of all those topics, 2023, you had the first year, pandemic year. You settled in a little bit. But 23 is really loaded in the state of Kansas. I know you can't mention the kids, but yeah. how vital is that that group of kids? It, it's it's huge, and and um, more and more Power Five schools are coming in our state and recruiting, and uh, um, we've got a lot of talent in this state. And I hope they, I hope a lot of those kids realize how special it is to play in your state, how special it is, um, you know, to have your family come. And watch you play and the fact that you're from the state of Kansas and play it at K-State it's a special thing and, and a lot of our guys uh, that uh, have graduated with us here will tell you that same thing and so um, you know I, I'm, I know that Taylor Bratt and his staff are doing a phenomenal job of, of reaching out and continuing to touch those guys as much as we can and then uh, a number of a number of kids in the state have been here already for junior days and, and for game day visits and stuff and it's, you know, you've got to build relationships with them and uh, be honest with them and, and hope we can land a few of them. Coach, you, you mentioned, I mean, the importance of, of the recruiting classes on coming in the state of Kansas and the interest from other schools coming into Kansas for those uh, athletes. How have you seen the sport of football develop at the high school ranks in the state of Kansas, and how do you foresee it continuing to grow? Well, we've got really good coaches in, in the state of Kansas at the high school ranks, and so – that's for starters. They, they're getting coached really well. Um, they're a lot of them are multi-sport guys, which I think is huge. I'm a big advocate of kids playing as many sports as they can um, because it's the competition that that drives kids. Uh, and you know, once again, for for us, just getting out and seeing these coaches like we were able to for two weeks, we hadn't done that in so dang long to go out and see coaches. You know, as head coaches, you only can go out in the uh, in this time in the winter, you can't go out in the spring. So me trying to get to some schools in December and January was important. I know that is for all head coaches. I almost wish they would flip it because of so much time not being able to see high school coaches. I wish as, as head coaches we could go out uh, in that spring calendar. I don't think that's going to happen. But, uh, um, you know, for us, the, uh, the state and the bordering states are going to continue to be important. And that's why – you know, the walk-on program here, I think, uh, I'm not sure I'll have the exact number, but somewhere 10 or more kids we've put on scholarship from the state of Kansas since um, our staff arrived in 19 tells you a kid can come here, take a chance as a walk-on, 
and it's going to pay off for them. Um, and then, you know, there's a couple of KC Mo guys as well that did that. But uh, uh, that's what uh, – it's It's not even a sell. It's, a, it's, it's an opportunity for you to come in, make a name for yourself, because you're going to get taken care of um, if you see the field. Got to ask, how close are you to making your final hire? Pretty close. Um, Colin and I need to visit. I have not. I've been busy all day long. We had a couple guys in, uh, but Colin and I need to still visit uh, probably this evening. And in terms of his rehab, as Adrian Martinez getting pretty close, how how much is he going to be available in the spring? I would think he would probably be what Skyler was last year, probably throwing a little bit of seven on seven, uh, maybe some routes on air. He's not going to be able to do any competitive team drills, and we knew that when we recruited him. He did run today. Um, so he's not like he can't do anything. I mean, he's limited in the weight room, obviously, um, but uh, he was running with uh, Will and Jaron and Jake, and uh, I know that that excited him so that he could show guys that he could compete, so he's not uh, um, totally in enabled. I wanted to ask you about the uh, linebacker position. Were you initially going to try to get a high school linebacker, and was that kind of a bonus to be able to get Jennings, who's – He's got three years of eligibility well, that left. That was a huge bonus because he's got so much time. But we thought we did a good job of getting a couple uh, in the early period with Jake and with Toby. So we felt like we hit that with the young guys. Um, plus, we have a couple of really good young players in the program that uh, haven't played yet. So um, yeah, when once we got Will and we got Brandon, we kind of shorted it up for the spring. Now we got to see where we're at at the end of spring to see um, if that's an area that we still need to go out and find somebody, that's it's hard for for me to tell you. At the end of spring, we're going to go out and find this position, and this position, and this position. Um, you'd like to think we're probably going to find another running back because we're down there, but I don't know on some of these other spots until um, we see how some of these younger younger players have developed. We're going to see uh, Adrian Martinez for the first time today here. What do you like best about him? Presence, just his presence. Um, he's going to command the room. Uh, he's a uh, mature beyond his years, and he's an older kid anyway, but he is mature. You guys are going to love the kid because um, he's here for the right reasons. Um, he's here because he wants an opportunity to play. Uh, he hit it off with Coach Klein and myself, um, and I, I'm, I'm just really excited because I've seen him compete. Didn't know him prior to the recruiting process, but I've seen him compete. Um, and like I said, I know a few coaches up there that speak the world of him, and um, he's going to, I think, be a really special person in our program. Even most successful players face challenges. What do you foresee as maybe being his, his challenge coming in here? I think his biggest challenge right now is the fact that he's not cleared to do everything and to be that leader, to be that guy that, uh, well, I, I can't, outwork everybody in the weight room because I can't do everything. Um, so it's building relationships. It's having wideouts come in here and watch film with them. It's going to dinner with Malik and Phil and Cade and getting around those guys. It's going to the throwing sessions that Will and Jaron run and, and picking guys' brains and communicating and all those things. And that's what excites him. But I know that frustrates him because he can't show, hey, man, look at my work ethic because that's why he ran today. I know he's so excited about running. Absolutely. But he's not a six-year guy, is he? I don't know. I, I, I lose track of how many years people are here. But what's that? Okay. Well, he's getting old like his pops. Uh, no, Kate is coming back. So if I miss that, I mean, once again, I, I don't have that list in front of me, but Kate is coming back. I could tell you guys that aren't if you ask the names, but Kate is. Uh, I don't know if it's – Evolved. I mean, we're still trying to win with character and integrity first, trying to win close to home first. Um, you know, the, the messaging from our coaches is we're going to coach you hard. We're going to be honest with you. We're going to treat you fair. We're going we're gonna to challenge the heck out of you, but we're going to love you. And uh, um, you got to love the kid first before you can challenge him. But uh, uh, build relationships with those guys and give them an opportunity to play Big 12 football.